Hey guys, we are back, back at the bench. And uh, this time we're not going with uh, paint per se. Uh, we're going with these powders, these chromed powders. Um, these are by Armored Komodo. They've been around a while, but I had to experiment with myself to see if they were worth showing you guys. And uh, when I saw they had a chrome, which I'm into, I love chrome, um, I gave it a shot. They're, they're essentially a powder that you grind into uh, your base paint. So for this we have chrome black, burnished bronze, cobalt blue, and supernova red. Now let me show you the powders themselves. Now you can look at the back to see what you're going to kind of get for your color. Not the end result, just what you're going to get for the color. I'll show you the powders in a second. See that? Okay. Very tiny. It's even hard to get my hands around it. But there's enough in here I had to, to complete probably two to three giant kits. Can you see the powder? Let me show it to you in the bronze. Oh, tough to grab these. There we go. Here's the cobalt blue. Look at that. Now these are similar to the powders they use, my wife told me, at the uh, nail salon. Look at the red. When um, they put like a clear on your nail, let it dry, and then they rub these in. And then you get the gloss coat over it and you get that candy effect. It's the same idea. I imagine where these, these guys got the idea for this and just marketed it towards a uh, gumpla. Um, here's the thing. It's a little tricky to apply. As far as timing goes, put, applying it is not that hard. It's just getting down what it goes over. It's got to go over a black primer um, and it not quite cured black primer. They recommend Vallejo Surface Primer Gloss Black. This is what they recommend. I happen to have it. And if you don't have this, you can have a, a black primer laid down. Say you're all clad or whatever black primer you have. I have Stanares. I have a few here. Um, I have the Mr. Hobby. What they said is you can get your black, even gloss black paint. Just use your black paint. A Tamiya, uh, Mr. Hobby. Put the gloss black paint, let it dry, and put, they recommend, which I also just tested, metal varnish from Vallejo. Spray this over it. So you have this for the, for these to cling to. By cling to, I mean you can't have it fully cure. Like, uh, for this test, I'm going to go with this primer. Now I'm going to let it sit for 15 minutes, just so it's tacky to the touch. Then you put the powders on and rub them right into the black. And that creates uh, the look. And that's how it's done. Um, so with the metal, because I have this, I'm going to use this. But like I said, if you guys have a black paint, even if you have a Vallejo black paint, right? Even if you have a Vallejo black paint, put this over it after it's cured. And then wait 15 minutes and hit it with this. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to go over to the air, the uh, the spray booth, and uh, I'm going to put this on uh, four spoons, and uh, we're going to let it sit. I'll I'll put the exact time up uh, when I come back to the bench how long it takes. But right now, head over to the booth, and we're going to put on this uh, black primer. I'm going to thin this primer. I tried it out of the uh, bottle, straight out of the bottle, and I thought it was a tad thick, and it didn't it didn't set properly when I first tested it. When I put it um, when I thinned it a little bit with their thinner and their uh, flow improver, it came out perfect. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll show you uh, the mixture uh, just before I head to the booth. So let me show you that, and I'll see you at the booth. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, for the process, lay down your cloth. As I said in my uh, tips video, I like to keep a cloth to keep stuff clean. I shook this up really well, and you can also remove the cap and use the, the paint stirrer. Um, these have pour spouts in them. So we're going to put a good amount here because we're going to do four spoons. So I don't know, play it by, you can just eye this up. It doesn't take much because we're just putting down a base coat anyway. And then uh, we're going to put thinner. Now it's kind of thin, but it wasn't thin enough. So I say uh, 10 to 20 drops of the thinner. Depending on, actually, it depends on the size of your kit. I happen to have their thinner here. You can also use the Ultimate Airbrush Thinner. It's universal, and it works with Vallejo pretty good. 
Now it's going to see, it still seems uh, a little thick, but you can see it's just thin enough. It's a grayish black too. It's not quite fully black. Um, now we're going to put uh, about three or four drops of flow improver. Some guys can even will even use just flow improver for their thinner. And believe it or not, you can do that too. If I didn't have the airbrush thinner, I probably would have went went ahead and just did that. So here's your consistency. I'm going to drag it to the cup, and you want it, you want it to leave a trail. See, it's leaving a trail. That's what we're looking for. Not that it sticks a big blob. Not that it runs down too fast. And this should be enough to get our four spoons done because we have the four colors to go. All right, I'm going to pause the camera here and I'm going to meet you over at the booth. All right, guys, uh, here we are at the booth. I'm going to go with the soup spoons that I just got. Um, and I filled up the brush. Uh, let's see who we got at. I'm at 18 PSI. Sorry about that. I want to hit the keep hitting the camera. All right, here's what we're going. We're gonna coat these lightly at first. I got it really uh, really coming out really fine for the first coat. I'm gonna get each spoon. You stay back a bigger distance on the first coating because we want to just kind of lay down the, the base for the, the paint to grip. Yeah, if I hit this camera one more damn time, I need to get a super zoom lens to get the camera on the other side of the room. Same thing, we're going to hit it lightly, first coat. Blow it off first. Now what we're just going to do is we're going to go back to the beginning and hit it again. On the third coat is when I'm going to go in for the gloss look. Now when you're doing this for your, if you're doing it on a Gundam, I mean you're, you're probably not going to do the whole kit. So you're probably going to do shoulders or legs or something like that or different knees and different parts. Um, then it's not bad. Then you're going to have to do your two legs, get the process done. Once once, uh, once you get it all down and you start to, to put the, the powders in, it's not bad. It goes by really fast. So it's, it's not bad. It'll probably stay tacky for uh, longer than you think. All right. I'm going to go in now for the... I'm going to go now and see if we can get the glossy final coat in here. Just going to come in closer and go across slower. It goes on pretty good. It'll have a grayish look to it, not like the all clad black. But see now, it'll grip. It'll be perfect what we're looking for. It don't have to be super perfect because we're going to be rubbing, uh, you know, powders into it. That's it. All right, we'll do another one. Come in closer and go across slower. Actually performs well for a Vallejo. I'm starting to get used to these Vallejo products a little bit. I'm not a fan of their basic paints. Alright, look at that. Very good. We'll do one more. Coming close and slower. Close and slower. Make sure you pass it before you pull, before you release the trigger. Come across and stop. Come across and stop. Coming in and going out. All right. So we're not spending the whole time spraying uh, um, primer. I'm going to do this last spoon off camera. And I'm going to meet you back at the bench. We're going to wait 15 minutes exactly before this project starts. All right? I'll see you back at the bench. All right, guys. We are back at the bench. It's about 15 minutes. Uh, don't panic. It can't, it's still tacky. What I like to do is I like to touch the end here where nothing is uh, 
we're not going to get any fingerprints to know where you are. It's tacky. Um, keep a cloth laid out for this. And um, for this technique, I'm using my gloves that I showed in my other video, my tips video. Um, get small so they fit snug to the hand. You're going to use your finger for this. I tried it a couple ways. I've read several ways of doing it. One of them was the glove. This worked out the best, just using your finger as far as spreading it in. So here's what we're going to do. We'll start with the chrome. Right here. This is one of my cheaper brushes from, uh, I think, Hobby Lobby. There's a whole package of them. Um, we're going to apply and uh, take off the excess with this brush. You can tap it. See how it sticks to the brush? Just bang it in there. Yeah. And you're just going to spread it throughout the, the spoon like this. Even sloppy like. Just, just spread it around. It goes a long way. That's why it says it looks like it's a tiny package. But uh, you're going to realize now you know, how far along this goes. You're going to rub it all in. Yeah, that's that's good. You because know, um, when we're gonna rub it in with our finger, we're gonna pretty much spread it all around. That should be good right there. And you can even it comes right off the the brush, and even this will bang shave right off. Now you're gonna take your finger, all right, and we're just gonna rub it in. Then we're gonna put some more. You can tell how your finger is dragging if the paint is not uh, dry enough or if it's too dry. It's just a, it's a feeling you're going to get while you're doing it. You can feel the glove dragging across. Um, if you don't have gloves, I might as well show you. This is what you can do. You can just swirl it in. I feel the glove gives you a little more of a feel of uh, the tackiness of the primer and if it's dragging too much you gotta wait a little longer and um, if it is draggy load up a bunch more and um, that should seal you seal it in you know for the final shot now you can kinda get the look of it here you can see it's pretty even across so I'm just gonna go across my finger to finish it up Get this out of the way, and you're going to take the excess off with the brush. And then I like to uh, like to let it sit a little bit, but for this video, I take an old uh, t-shirt I have here, a soft 100% cotton, and we're just going to rub. Check this out. Isn't that beautiful? And then once it dries, it dries in about a day. You can you can gloss coat it, put decals over it, anything you want. Check that out. Look at that. Look at that. It has a really natural look to it. That's why I wanted to try the dark chrome. Um, I only tried four of them. They were like eight bucks a piece. They're not that cheap. You go, they go a long way, as you can tell. All right, we're gonna do all the colors. We're gonna do all the colors. There's your black chrome. Is that beautiful? No, I I, I gloss coated some of them. So I'll show you those at the end, that it, it kind of changes the look of it. You know, that's for sure, like anything else. But it's pretty it's pretty damn sturdy, uh, durable otherwise. I'll show you that too. I left one of them without any gloss, without any gloss coat over it. All right? I'm going to pause this. We're going to shake this off or get another one. Just flip it over, and we're going to do the next spoon. Alright guys, here we go. Next spoon. It's still tacky. Yep. Oh, you know, you can even use the same brush. It comes right off. Look at it. Just, you just shake it and it comes right off. Because it's not sticking to anything, you know. And my glove, I just rubbed um, a cloth over it and got all the powders off my glove. Alright, I'm going to go in. What do we have? Bronze, alright. Same thing. Just going to tap it. Seems like a waste, but I think they account for that when how much you get. But look at this. This time I just tapped it once. And just a hair more at the tip here. 
And look at that. It went all the way around. I'm getting right to the edges. All right. Here we go. Get this out of the way. Go really light. You're not really pushing much in the beginning here. Once you get a nice even all the way around, I like to come in and make sure each spot is covered. Already, it's incredible. Look at it. And it dries nice, too. After a while, it ends up drying like a pure plated... I mean, this looks like metal, guys. This looks like as good as anything we've airbrushed. Now, granted, it's a lot of work, and you're not going to do a little corners like little pieces like this but you know nice maybe you know certain leg portions and some parts of the frame i think you're on to something here i think this stuff is terrific okay now look at how even we're going to buff it out with the uh 100 cotton and you can use a, a micro cloth too make sure it's really fine and there we go Look at that, guys. I'll show them afterwards with the black background. But um, let's move on. Uh, we're going to do the cobalt blue. We're going to do the colors now. Now, there's a ton of colors for these. There's color shifts, all kinds of colors. Purples, dark reds, light reds, yellows. And uh, now that they work, I will invest in the rest, and uh, we'll go through more of them. But for now, let's look at cobalt blue. Let me pause the, the camera. All right, guys. Cleaned it off the cloth. Going in with the cobalt blue, this is a deep blue. Look at that. Cleaned off the brush, shh, flipped over the towel here, and we're going to go in. Look how much this is loaded up. Ew. Wow, this covers really fast. Look at that. The secret is getting... Uh, the primer just right that's the secret and if you don't have a primer the metal varnish over your black same thing about 15 20 minutes I think that's it I think we're covered there all right we're going in make sure your glove is clean from the last time it is all right look at that here we go This is going to be candy without uh, without the whole chrome process. Wow, look at that. Wow, look at this. I can imagine, I, I'm dying to see the rest of their color lineup. I just grabbed these four. I figured, you know, all complete different spectrums, a chrome, a bronze, uh, the goldish, and the uh, red and blue. But now we got to look at greens, we got to look at yellows. I'm all in now. I gotta pick a particular Gundam now to, to build using this stuff. All right, now we're gonna go in. Cloth, 100% cotton. Buff this baby out. And there you go. Cobalt blue, baby. Look at that. Again, I'll hold them up at the end of the test under the regular light with the uh, the cloth out of the way. Let's move on to the red, Supernova Red, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. Don't want to shake the camera on you. All right, we're going in with the Supernova Red. Clean off the brush, clean off the towel. Here's our last prime spoon. This stuff clings like, look at that. And, oh, this is, this is Christmassy, huh? Look at that red. Now flip it over and get what you can on the other side. Now you can spread it around, but it does like uh, it does like to stay in little heaps, and that's the part that ends, you end up rubbing into the plastic and into the uh, primer. Don't need a lot once you get to the end. I mean, see how much is left. I mean, this stuff. I, I heard it can build up to three, four, five kits depending on the kit. So, and uh, sorry guys, hitting the camera. So. Um, don't, don't let it be intimidated what you paid for it because it looks like it does go a long way. Okay, now out of the way. I'm going to get the excess out. And going in for the rub. Here we go. 
All right, already looking great. Wow, look at that. I think that's good. 100% cotton cloth. And let's see what we got. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful coloring. I can imagine the color shifting is probably great too. Awesome. All right, let me clean this area up. And uh, we'll wrap this up. We'll hold them up to the camera individually, and we'll look at it with uh, a better background. I'll see you in a couple of seconds. All right, guys, here we go. It looks terrific. This is chrome black or black chrome. Look at that. It's even. You can't see any of the powders in it at all. This is the burnished bronze. I guess you get close to what you're going to get with the bottom. This one is really nice. Not quite reflective. You can almost see me in it. Because it's not that quite mirror finish. But it has a very realistic metal look to it. Cobalt blue. Look at that. It's a little duller here. The, the camera's picking it up more intense for you guys. Supernova Red. Great name. How's that? Now, for scratch resistance, here's one I did when I first got these to test it. And it, uh, it holds up well. I'm scratching it. I mean, I'm not digging into it, you know, but it seems to hold up really well. I mean, some of the other paints when I test it chips right off. Um, so I think it's pretty durable. I don't even think, personally, I don't think you'd have to coat it unless you're going to put a decal down then you want to maybe go over it with a, a clear now here's the difference I cleared um, a couple of them and I think it affected its look this is uh, this is a Vallejo I use Vallejo because they, they said to use Vallejo products for the base so I figured I'll use a Vallejo product for the top coating uh, meaning uh, uh, an acrylic but look at the difference you can see it? it this makes it more like a pearl black let me see see my wicked colors Let's go over this a little bit. See the Wicked Colors, Wicked Pearl Black. That's a car color. And see that? That's what it kind of made this look like. This is the Wicked Color. This is the spoon that I clear coated. But this is it when I didn't clear coat it. See, it has nothing to do with this. So the clear coating, I use this, by the way, Vallejo Acrylic Gloss Varnish. So this, is, I think, is how it's supposed to look. This is how it looked with the clear ends up looking more like my uh, wicked colors so while it still looks great I think you should leave it alone now I'm gonna test other uh, uh, glosses as I go I'm gonna have to let this dry a few days before I test other glosses I'm gonna try um, the metal varnish over it is what I'm going to test at a later date and see what we end up with but that's what happens with the gloss on that I didn't gloss the brass because it's ultra shiny I glossed the blue and ended up with more like a car blue. Look at it's more candy, but you can see flake in it. You can see flake in it, and you can't see flake in the natural. Right? This one I did earlier so I could gloss coat it for you guys. I did two at the same time. So, yeah. so this is a, a almost like you know um, a stained metal. It's beautiful. This looks like a paint like you would put on a car. So the glossing does affect the look. All right, I also glossed the red. This is it, the one I just showed you, the one we just did with the powder. And this is a gloss. I mean, that looks like a cherry paint job. Let me see. I think I got a pearl red over here. No, well, this is a, this is a pearl red car color. But you can see it's almost to that look. You can see flake in it. This, you don't see any flake. It's just a bronze. It's just a, how can I, how can I put it? A plated piece of metal. A plated piece of metal. So... I personally would leave them alone. Now, I am going to test it with the metal varnish. I can let it dry a long time. I'm going to let it dry 48 hours, probably over the weekend. I'll shoot it with uh, the metal varnish, and I'll, I'll give you guys an update at the beginning of one of my videos. But um, that, the, that's it. What more can we say? I mean, that's it, gloss. At least I tried it gloss because some guys always ask, how does it come out glossed? And there it is, glossed. Well, look great for cars. 
I mean, you know, one of the guns will look good like that too, if you need it protected. So far, though, testing, particularly this one's been sitting about a week when I first got them in. Um, it seems to, it seems pretty sturdy. It seems like it's buffable, but you know, to a certain point. But it, 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 it's 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 uh, it's pretty durable. It's pretty durable. I would I would personally I would leave them alone to get that beautiful natural look. Now we're gonna test other colors. I'll order more. Not that I like them, but particularly uh, color shifts. We're gonna try some color shifts with this stuff too. But it's armored Komodo. Um, I think I got these at USA Gundam Store. I'll put a link in the bottom. They're not cheap. It's eight bucks for each of these colors. And uh, I don't know if the price goes up and down for color shifts. I'll have to check. But we are going to have to test those too. But they work. I don't mind spending on a product that works. And these work. They look terrific. Look at that results. So, um, yeah, that's it. I couldn't wait to show you guys. Because I was so happy when I pre-tested a couple of them that it worked. I had to get it down. I had to figure out the timing. you got to get the timing down with the primer. And it's about 15, 20 minutes. And um, you can start at 15 if you've got a bunch to go in. A bunch of pieces. 15 minutes is the starting point because you can go probably an hour after that. It'll still be tacky enough, and you'll still get the beautiful look. You know, I tried it over a hardened uh, primer, and it didn't smooth in at all. It didn't go in at all. You know, you ended up with just kind of rubbing off. But this is a great look. This this gets it down perfect. 15 minutes with this varnish with and uh, with this primer. And if you don't have a primer, you're going to use your metal varnish over a black. And uh, all right. I'll give you an update later on. I'll see if the metal varnishes changes the look like uh, like it did when I put the gloss over these and the reds. But um, I like them the way they look. They're a little subtle, not not over shiny. It has a look to it. If you've seen it in person, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, guys, I love the stuff. I recommend it. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, like the video. Subscribe if you haven't yet because we got a lot more to go, a lot more tests to go. And uh, thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you in a few days.